Welcome back to Science Rocks. Before the end of the school year, students participated in a celebration of science. Here's more with elementary science specialist, Julie Poth. So today is day one of a two-day event. Today is the District Science Showcase Field Day that is for fourth grade students from five elementary schools. The students here are learning about the water cycle, so they are following the a day in the life of a drop of water. So they're going to all these different places that we have that have water, plants, animals, the ocean, lakes, ponds, and uh, they just follow that, that track and, and where does the water go during the day. Okay, what you And so the fourth grade students are here all day and they rotate through different STEM challenges and through um, the science research projects looking for clues. Um, they eat lunch here and uh, we hope when they leave they're tired and they think science is the best. So we see that the students are extremely engaged in the activity STEM challenge that they're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about what the purpose is and what their goal is? Uh, right now their goal is to build the highest structure they can in 15 minutes. And the purpose here is to really see kind of their problem solving skills and how they work together as a team and kind of get them to think and talk about problem solving and how things work together and structure and things like that. 35 inches. 35 and a half. 35 and a half. Well, they've been talking a lot about structure, um, they've been talking a lot about supports and um, balance, and that has a lot to do with physical science and gravity and how everything balances, things like that. Also, there's a whole strand about uh, problem solving and, uh, you know, putting things together and uh, engineering and um, making a plan, which they did first, so this kind of is a holistic approach to all those different things. Some of the concepts that the students would be learning about are not only science um, concepts, but also learning to work with the affective, learning teamwork, and learning how to work together, and how to communicate with each, with each other. With the STEM challenges, if this communication doesn't happen between the students, then they are not going to be able to be as successful, at, and, and that's how life is with scientists, that they need to learn to communicate with each other in order to do their best work. Well, they had the plank challenge, and that's a STEM activity where they have 15, 20 minutes to plan their building, how they're going to execute it, and then they have about 15, 20 minutes to actually build their structure. It has to be freestanding, and it had to be the tallest. So it's teaching them engineering, as well as teamwork, as well as um, perseverance, because several of them had to rebuild. We have a lot of force and motion concepts happening here because some of the STEM challenges have students building things and they fall over, so we have concepts of gravity happening, we have concepts of forces and balances. The nature of science are those, those um, concepts that are thinking like a scientist, so we want kids to think out of the box, to have wanderings, and to work together to explore. We learned that when we built it, that we used strategy by um, trying to work together as a team. Today they're coming and practicing hands-on all the things we've been learning all year in our classroom and making a fun day out of science. So what do you think the kids are going to really take out of this as they move to fifth grade? I think they're going to see practical ways to apply what we've been teaching and some real world uses of the water cycle and physics and life cycle that we've been learning about in classroom. What are you girls doing? We're trying to build a, spot, trying to build a structure five feet high uh, around me. Are you building a cage for yourself? Yeah. <laughs> it was my idea to build it for him, around me. The students are having, number one, a STEM challenge and fun because they have to build a structure out of the straws and the connectors, and it has to surround the one person. So it's teamwork, it's planning, it's experimenting, and most of all, it's success for everybody. Uh, number one, they're learning kind of tensile strength, 
what is going to support a five-foot structure. So they had to th think and practice. Um, they're learning cooperation. Uh, they are learning that design is so important in any experiment. We also have some mathematical concepts um, in these challenges and the kids have to measure. We are measuring using timers, so they're doing stopwatches um, to measure time. We also have measuring the um, lengths and heights and widths. So that really pulls in a lot of uh, science concepts into the day for the students. There you go. All right, so over here we got uh, teams that are putting together a Tinker Toy car. They're testing out their design. They're rolling it down the ramp. They want to make their car go the furthest. So they're just testing and retesting. And we're going to do a final race in here in one minute to see whose design uh, goes the farthest. It's, it's wild in here today. It's awesome. We're having a crazy time. A key piece is as we move towards new standards in our state of Florida, um, engineering and technology is going to be a new piece that's added into these standards. So this particular event is really supporting uh, initial kickoff for our students in, in learning about design and learning about um, exploration and learning about reasoning that are all, all part of the engineering and technology concepts that, with the new standards. We're um, going to um, connect the feet. Why do you want to connect those? So they're going to be stable. Okay, so it won't be okay. more stable, less wobbly. I like it. Uh, and the new piece with the engineering STEM challenges, um, how do you think that's going to support them in um, thinking about possibly a career in those fields? Do you think that that's going to help spark some interest? Absolutely. I think it provides motivation and just, again, gives them that real-world connection of how science is used and how they could be scientists out in the world. No, because it's supposed to be um, It teaches them real-world experiences and it gets them really thinking, critical thinking skills about how things work, why they work and um, also to kind of explore different ideas. And one of the great things and opportunities that the students are participating in is that they are looking at science research projects and then they are looking um, using a scavenger hunt they are finding clues and then finding the science research project that aligns and supports that so it's a scavenger hunt through the science research projects. Which project measures how far a mealworm travels when temperature is changed. You're going to walk through and read all the poster boards and you're going to look for a number. Each poster board has a number. This one says Raptor 22. So if you think the answer is 22, you're going to write 22 on that for number one. All right? Go. Stand up. So this has been a great couple of days here at St. Pete College Clearwater with the District Science Showcase. Our students have had some tremendous opportunities to participate in STEM challenges and learn more about science research projects. As we end this wonderful weekend, we hope that the students continue to take this excitement and this engagement back into their classrooms, but also back into their lives and so that they start to, to look and be curious about all the science that, that is around them. show for today, but by no means is that the only thing going on with Pinellas County students this summer. In our next episode, we'll take you to the Summer Tips Camp, happening at two locations throughout the district, including here at Lakewood High School. This four-week program is for incoming eighth grade students with a passion for STEM. It includes a study of robotics, computer programming, multimedia, and guidance. And today here at Lakewood, students are working on their final robotics competition, making real-world connections to the show BattleBots. Explain to us, what does this mean for you as a TIPS teacher to work with middle school students? 
Uh, well, the, the biggest thing is they're so capable at this age. Um, it's amazing to give them all the parts and let them go on their own. Uh, that's why we design, have them design and build all their own robots uh, from scratch, uh, is that they can go and with a really fast, really steep learning curve, they can build these successful robots on their own, with their own design. Uh, so that's really neat that they can do that at such a young age, and then they can move on to other programs and take all that with them. So ladies, explain to me what we're looking at. It's a rover bot, and the rover bot basically is like a claw, and we have to pick stuff up off the ground, and the claw has to put it in our bucket so we can win. And if we have the most like things on the ground and pick it up, then our robot wins and goes to different competitions. Part of the program is also designed to give students a glimpse of career pathways in STEM and options for their educational career beyond Pinellas County Schools including a visit to the Pinellas Technical College in St. Petersburg, USF St. Petersburg, and the International Headquarters for Valpac. Let's take a quick look at what these students experienced. Every now and then we may have a new location we want them to go to, so we'll update a map using a CAD drawing. We'll update a CAD drawing and we'll send it into the AGV and now it'll know the new routes it needs to take. On the floor here we see very few workers. Explain why we don't see a lot of people working on the floor. Well, the, most of the material movements handled by machines, as you can see, uh, in the old days we would have used forklifts to move this material around. Now a computer just sends the order to these and they're looking for work and when they see a job that they can do, they'll accept that job and they'll take it on. Carla, you just did an activity outside related to STEM. Can you share with us what you did? Uh, well, um, we went outside and we picked places where ants would be there the most. And we made spitballs and we put sugar water in them. And we just put them where we think they would be. And we just calculated how many ants there were. When we came back and we looked at all the data, what was our overall finding? Uh, that wherever we um, put sugar, water. When the high school kids are done, they'll have A and B done, 450 hours. Okay. Goes towards their adult. All idea is to bring them in when they graduate high school, they can finish the program. And, and there's so much while. more that we'll show you on the next edition of Science Rocks. I'm Laura Spence, and we'll see you next time. Are we going to do this again?